right, everybody, we're officially getting started here. Thank you so much for coming in. We're here live at the Heat Press for Profit Lounge at Printing United in Las Vegas. And so we've been having conversations and topics with industry leaders over the course of the last two days, and we've been recording all this content. It'll be published out on our Stalls TV YouTube channel. So if you're not a subscriber, subscribe to our Stalls TV YouTube channel where we publish three videos at least every week to help you grow your business. So I'm excited to welcome in uh, our guest today. It's Jason Reinhardt, who is the Chief Commercial Officer and co-founder at a company named Brickle. So Jason, welcome. Tell us a little bit about Brickle and how you participate in this world of e-commerce. Sure, thanks for having me. Uh, Brickle is a, uh, we are an e-commerce platform and we specialize in microstore technology. And what that means basically is for clients like this that have company stores or custom stores that you're selling to your client, we bring all of that online and automate. So if you're, if you're dealing with, you want to make one company store, a Shopify might work as an example, but if you want to make 500 company stores, 1,000, our technology allows you to set up a store, fully embellished items, ready to sell in 15 minutes or less. So we give clients the ability to give a much better digital experience, right, for the clients, bring it online, at, at speed, right? So what took days or weeks now takes minutes. And so those are some of the advantages we like to do to help automate that part of the process. Got it. So web stores, company stores at scale, uh, which I'm really excited about. So I met with Jason, gosh, it must have been a couple months at our decorating fulfillment center in Pennsylvania. He flew in to uh, meet with us mm -hmm. and we got to talking about uh, the market and the opportunities that are out there for apparel decorators to really connect the whole ecosystem of web stores and fulfillment for print on demand, which is such a important topic today and as we move into the future. But before we get there and talk specifically about how to do that, let's just level set for everybody on what the difference, uh, how you define a company store or a web store versus any website or e-commerce. Like how should people process that in their mind in case they're unfamiliar? Sure, so the basics is if you just have stock products, right? That's that's just a normal e-com. But if you're wanting to get an account, we'll say like you wanted to get an employee store for Toyota, well, maybe Toyota wants a fully branded Toyota employee store. So imagine going after those type of clients, that's where we would specialize. So it it's, can be co-branded both in your company and into Toyota. And that usually increases sales just from the user experience alone because people buy from what feels familiar. So when they see their logos, they see it online, that part of that digital experience. And that's what we, we, we do very well. I think that that's something that's, that's what's missing in the market to, in that is being able to do that more than one at a time, right? Yeah, great. And, and I think uh, pulling out a lot of the uh, cost and the time that's involved in setup uh, for those that are operating in the web store environment today, uh, what Jason's saying is basically we have client, client wants a tailored shopping experience, whether that client is a corporation or a brand or a or team. A yeah. team. Yeah. There's 50 market verticals we could probably yeah, make for web exactly. stores. If you're selling to groups, right, a whole bunch of groups, you want to process a lot of custom products, you, you need it to be organized. And that's something that e-commerce really had a difficult time doing for the custom, right? They, it's, it's easy to take an order, but how do you get all that data where it needs to go to get it processed? And with our system, we find we save on company stores, as an example, processing from start to finish, eight to 12 hours per store. So I always tell people, you know how many stores you put up, what is that total? And for some clients, it can be thousands of hours based on that. Excellent. And, and for your clients that you're seeing, um, are you seeing a lot that, that really have dozens and dozens of live active stores? Oh, yeah. No, we have clients that have like over 5,000 active stores. 5,000 active stores. Yeah. So it's a huge part of the strategy. So there's the idea of building one store at a time, but being able to clone the stores, develop them at scale. That's really uh, a big part of the solution that's being provided. And so I guess, what are some of the top trends that you are seeing out there in web stores for the clients that are utilizing your technology today? Well, I think kind of taking a step back, what I found was interesting is you look at how the processes are, right? How are people putting a logo on and embellishing it? And we found that they were using a lot of different tools, right? They're in, they're in uh, Adobe for this. They're, they're pulling an embellishment down from that. And so when we looked at it, we thought, well, everybody's universally doing it the same way. So just just putting embellishments on us like 20 items we couldn't believe how different processes so what we were looking for people were looking for just an easy way to just kind of a drag and drop one click type of thing that gets done what needs to be done and so 
that, that, that has been one of the triggers that we built. But the main thing is everybody's doing it the same way, but nobody's kind of figured out how to do it instead of one at a time, right? Everybody's doing one at a time for an item. Everybody's doing one at a time for a store. So just to clarify real quick, we're, we're talking about the virtual sample, the imagery that's going mm -hmm. up to represent the product in the web store environment with right. displaying the logo yes. on the product in the logo location. Yeah, and one of the things that's different that was uh, for digital transformation, it's interesting. So everybody says that word, but I always ask what it means and people think website. No, it's a lot more than that. So what we looked at was what are people doing to kind of transform is we found that salespeople would, you get a client, they want, to look, they want a design and there goes a PDF or a JPEG and it's an email back and forth and that's kind of the approval process. And what we realized is that's a wasted opportunity for branding your company, right? What you want to do is bring them into your environment. So what we did was we showed that we can set up a store as fast as you can do one item. So just use the store as the, your display case, right? Oh, that's okay. the approval yeah. process. It's very impressive to the client, right? It's something that's never been done before. And if they made a change with it in three minutes, you could go back and say, yeah, we've moved all the logos. It's for our, a lot of our clients, they're kind of mind blown that it can be done. And so that's, that's some of the things that really help give a, diff, a competitive advantage in that experience. And, and the part that I like most is when the store closes, this is a missed opportunity in the industry we just we really see all the time is if a store closes, it just says the store's closed and there's nothing gone. Well, we put it in a catalog mode. We thought, well, a catalog mode just made it perfect. Salespeople could now have like, here's a, whatever your section. We do workwear, we do healthcare, we do this. Well, now you have links and you could show that as a client saying, hey, here are different examples of company stores. And what we found is a lot of clients say, well, their customer came back and go, I want that one, but with our logos, right? They just pick the link they like and that gives a lot more lead generation. And, and to me, it was really a wasted opportunity when you're doing emails. You, don't, you can't drive traffic off of emails. All right, so that was a lot. Let me unpack Sorry. it a little bit. No, it's great, <laughs> it's great, it's good stuff. So the um, basically blurring lines are almost eliminating the quote itself, right? In the, in the email and the touch point back and forth for the, all the touch points. And, and when there's more touch in the process, there's more room for mistake, error, lag time. And we know when there's a lag time, we lose sales, we lose opportunities, we lose business. And so you're actually saying that we can perhaps build a client store in the same amount of time that we could do a quote when they're interested in the product and we're actually sending them a live link just to the web store. We find we do it faster. Most people take longer doing one quote than we can do 15, 20 items on display, yeah. Okay, so that's interesting. It simplifies it, also makes it easy for you to turn on the store if they like the product or iterate on what's already being built. So blurring the lines or perhaps eliminating the concept of a quote, going straight to web store, uh, take that note down as an sure. opportunity for you. And then- I got another one that really points out, I, I think you'll like. All right, go for it. Because everybody can relate to this, right? Here's a customer, hey, I need this, I need this, I need this. You show it to them and then they come back and they're like, they disappear. They just like three weeks and they come back three weeks later. All right, we're ready, I need it, I need it, I need it now. And your brain is like, I don't remember the latest design. I don't know what the re last revision was. You're kind of going through that. But when it's on the store, you just click the link. The latest revision is always there. So even if an employee's out, whether they're on maternity leave, they vacation, whatever it is, the, anybody can go in, click on the store, and see all of the latest revisions or what it is. So it's that part kept it so organized because we didn't realize nobody really had an organized. They were just looking through emails. Uh, the latest, was that the latest one? No, that's not it. Uh, was that the latest one? Yeah, that one's it. Well, even worse, <laughs> when you think it's the latest one yeah. and you operate from that email and missed one and you actually decorate the blank, talk about a lot of uh, waste of, of time and, Absolutely. and precious products. So uh, I love that concept as well. So um, that live store view, also being able to have a live design update. So you're all, your team is always operating from the live and current design. And there was another nugget I wanted to get back in, into there. I was trying to retain it. Um, the second half of your uh, lock to logo location, mm -hmm. right? And so talk a little bit more about, like I understand. So mm -hmm. if I want a left chest logo, you're saying I can do many at once? Yes, so one of the things we noticed is everybody has like you have your set, like a three inch by three inch, a six by nine, you kind of have those parameters. So we in developed a technology called placement markers where you can set whatever the parameters are for production, right? When you want to send it. But the main thing is you just want to embellish things 
the same way. It's going to be chest, you know, wherever you have your spots. You can set those up as a master. And within our system, you just drag and drop it. Whatever items you picked, the logo will populate on those items. And in one click, you put it in the store. So there's no more downloading, uploading. So there's a, it's all kind of this one fluid motion for exactly how to do it. All right, speed, speed. Always. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause from this uh, scheduled programming. Welcome those of you in to the Heat Press for Profit Lounge. We're broadcasting live with innovation and e-commerce to grow your print-on-demand sales. I'm sitting here with uh, Jason Reinhardt, Chief Commercial Officer and Co-Founder at Brickle. They're an up-and-comer. They're coming quick, and we are starting to understand the opportunities available to us in web stores with doing things fast, at scale, duplicatable, repeatable processes. So let's... Take a little dip, if we could, sure. into decoration. Okay. Um, how are you seeing your stores, web stores, being fulfilled today? What do you What do you think's our current environment, and what's our future environment look like from your perspective? Well, I think everybody knows what the current environment is, right? Everybody's kind of a little bit different, doing it a different way, but in the same way, more labor intensive, right? Uh, you can look around the whole place. The, the word on demand is on every. Thing in this entire event. So we all know where the direction's going. I think really where the gap lies that we're looking at is for clients wanting to be able to process it where they just need the supplies, right? They want to buy the, the, the patches or whatever they're looking for for embellishment. And some want to do it that they have, I don't want to do embroidery, we'll handle this. And then we have some that want to go on demand. You really have to give all those options, right? Because everybody we deal with for the majority has some factor in there and some want to take advantage of all of it. So I would say it's it's really all of them, but nobody's really been able to figure out how to automate, if you would, right? Even when we go on demand, I, the gap is still going to be between e-commerce tying into the on demand. And that's 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 the that to me is the next factor that's going to be tying it all together, again, making it a seamless solution. Yeah, so the fulfillment process. Uh, anybody having uh, challenges managing fulfillment for their web stores? Yeah, so... Uh, popular. I know you don't want to put your hand up, but it's okay. We can we can admit to our shortcomings here. But <laughs> I think as an industry, there there's an opportunity for us there to make it easier for the apparel decorator or the fulfillment house, the contract decorator that is doing the work. So uh, for those that may be watching this, uh, we need real shop management tools that integrate with a variety of platforms to make fulfillment easier. As far as the technology goes. Uh, we have it today. If you've walked around, you understand that it's not just direct-to-garment printing anymore. Yes, that's a piece of the puzzle, but we have other screenless technologies out here like Ultra Color Max direct-to-film transfers to allow you to decorate more products, wide product assortment, and really any logo location that you want to snap that logo to. Yeah, yeah. Every, I think that the main thing is that most... It's, it's the variety and that when you come around here, the technology is advanced like just from two years ago to what it is now, it's the difference between night and day. And I think that what everybody's looking for is how do you contain, how do you bring jobs, right? Everybody's wanting to do what their job is. And what you kind of find is for the on-demand, I find that our clients just get more hours back to sell, right? At the end of the day, that's what you, what I find is when somebody says, well, I'm working more hours or when somebody says this job might take away my job. No, we find what it is, is you're doing 20 hours of a job you technically weren't hired for. So we're kind of cut that back down so you can do the job you're hired for. Because business owners, especially smaller ones, there comes a point, as you know, as you're growing your business that all of a sudden you can double your business and you look around and you're like, but I didn't make any more money. Right. That, that's what the inefficiencies do. So you, when you can automate and get all that, now that's really dialing into your profits and bottom line as opposed to thinking job loss, it's more, no, it's increased sales. You're looking at the wrong numbers. The right numbers, we've seen it. It's a 35% bump minimum when you go online. And we have we see a lot of people pre-COVID, it was less than 30% online. And we have clients left that started out less than 5%. And we're talking $200 million companies, less than 5% online. So just imagine when they get up to 30% and it's a 35% in volume increase. And now it's shifted up towards getting up to 60%. And the reality is it's going to be around 85, 90%. And those who don't adapt, it's going to be more difficult for them to, to really kind of survive. In a lot of ways, you really kind of have to really be paying attention to that. Yeah, so profitability matters. That's why you see profit in the name of the lounge here. And we want to teach you ways to become more efficient in everything you do, not just in how you decorate the product, but how you conduct business, set up e-commerce to really grow and scale and deliver time and money back to the business. So there's a lot happening out there. I mean, we've had we've had team stores for, for a while. Mm -hmm. um, they're developing and they're changing. We've mm -hmm. had corporate stores uh, for a while. 
Are there new opportunities like with, with NIL or name and image likeness or with kind of the influencer world that we live in here today? Are you seeing new opportunities and new markets that people should be looking at? Uh, yeah, so we actually, it's interesting you mentioned that. So we built out a, what we call an affluencer program, athlete influencer for exactly that. And what we were looking at is strategically aligning for these athletes to be able to make money. But the thing is, it, it seems in this industry, especially for the custom is, it's like they have this overwhelming, you don't need 15,000 polos. Somebody needs to tell me which polo is the right one, right? This <laughs> is the one that sells. That's what they're looking for. So really, I think there's a great opportunity, but harnessing it is finding the best selling products, right? The ones that everybody wants in that market. And then you have to be kind of consultive in, in the, with these athletes to help guide them. They're athletes. They're not business people. Um, but what's interesting is I was saying you want a casting net. For those who can get it, like we have clients that went out and got an entire university team, both sides, right? You don't know who's going to have your breakout moment. You don't care, right? As long as you have all of them, you just want somebody to have their breakout moment. And we find that that market, I mean, nobody's really tapped into it. Even Barstools is an example. Just kind of, he, he just put out a thing, I'll sponsor anybody that just wants to be sponsored, right? He had no idea how he was going to do anything, but that was his immediate reaction. So you know the market must be ripe if that's the first announcement he's going to make to, to, to bring him in. And I think there's a huge opportunity for those who understand how to, to take advantage of that, like really harness it. That, that lane opens up. To, to me, we, we've looked at it. We feel it's a half a billion to a billion dollar vertical. Easy. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, so keep your eyes open and print on demand and personalization and how you may want to harness web store technology. Think beyond your traditional markets of perhaps uh, sport and uh, corporate. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities out there where not only you can be leveraging the uh, tech piece itself on the e-commerce side, but leveraging different decoration methods to bring unique looks and unique styles into a print-on-demand environment to really deliver a uh, premium brand that is going to uh, match the brand of who you're decorating for. I'm glad you said premium brand. So one of the misnomers in the industry is that when you're bidding on on things, right? You you have to be the lowest price. It's always going to be the lowest, or where it comes down to. And what we see every time, and I have to like, we have to really consult with clients who are always trying to be competitive on the lower side to to win something. And what we realize is you're giving them a better user experience. People will pay more for a better user experience. So we build, start from a user experience and work your way backwards. That's going to do it. And I've, we have a client that's signed a four-year global merchandising deal. And I, I literally had to sit with the CEO and go, you just come at the top of the price point. I promise you that you, you're coming with more. You should be more. They should be less. And he won the deal. And that's what it was like. He would have gone lower. And, that, and that, that mindset is kind of industry we see. And that's why I was saying if you're first at digital transformation, you're giving the better experience, people are going to pay for that. And that is sheer profit. I mean, that's, that's all profit. Yeah. And, and, I, and I'll call attention to a, a great book that I read called The Challenger Sale that, that proves that concept with data that the company that provides the best sales experience it wins the business time and time again. And the sales experience is not only the way you're conducting business and responding and dealing with your client, but it's totally how we're embracing technology and making that a part of being easy to do business with. And so think about that. Think of how can we craft some unique value, strengthen our value proposition through the experience we deliver so we're not just talking about price. If you're getting price pressure, I always tell people you're not creating enough value. You start with understanding your customer, you then move to the buyer role within that customer that you're serving, and then you really take a look at your offer and say what pains them and what delights them, and how can I tap into that through the sales experience and the e-com experience. So uh, lots of fun, lots of topics. Uh, talking here with uh, Jason from Brickle. I guess give us some background. I may should have started with this. Like you in the industry, Brickle is coming strong on the scene. Like what's your background that you've been able to accelerate so quick? Uh, well, so we knew that we wanted to really harness into the custom market and selling to groups and teams. And when we really want to focus engineering side, right? So instead of doing a huge sales push and trying to go through that, we really strategized to make sure that we had what the resources and tools that people needed and also have that runway. So 
we wanted, so for the last 18 months when everybody was just focused on sales, we, we brought in, we were at 82 engineers, right? So we're constantly developing because we wanted to make sure that when we do things tactically, we're doing it the right way. Again, for us, it's, you got to give a user experience for our clients too. It can't be not what they're, you can't be promising what you'll give them a year and a half from now. You have to give them the experience immediately and then retain them. And so we really accelerated. It was like at this one pivotal moment where COVID hit, right? And the first thing they said is, Ecom is where everybody has to go. So I would say in a lot of ways, we were kind of standing in the right place at the right time when lightning struck, but we also have the right product. It was what nobody's building and nobody's focused on, on tomorrow's technology. So that's, and it's taken very well. So suppliers have jumped, jumped into us and Teamware has jumped in. So it's kind of scaled from there very quickly. Yeah, so I'll give you a quick background story. Stalls is a little bit in the e-commerce space, but we developed it completely out of necessity for creating an affordable solution to help our customers grow their business. And what we found is through studying customers that are leveraging a web store platform versus those who are not, they grow at a much faster rate uh, with the product that they buy, which shows you that they're being more successful in scaling and growing their business. So it's an absolutely uh, pivotal part of your strategy. You wanna make sure you're embracing a solution like this. I think Brickle is a, is a really strong contender coming on the, uh, on the scene, but I wanna stop a little because we have a nice crowd here as we're broadcasting. Uh, let's open it up for a little bit of Q&A. Um, we're talking about innovation in e-commerce to grow your print-on-demand sales. We have an expert here on the e-commerce side. I consider myself a little bit more than a novice on the printing side with heat transfer. <laughs> and so we're standing by for uh, any questions you have about this relevant topic. Just go ahead and shout them out to us. Crickets. I, I love know. it. All right, Everybody's all right. so shy. We must have answered all your questions in 20 minutes. Really good at this, guys. <laughs> What are some of the difficulties that are the hardest shift for you? Like, what, is the, what, are, what do you think is the hardest thing to overcome kind of that, that mindset that's been around for 20 years? Like, there's certain humps of kind of getting over, of we've done it this way for so long. What are some of the biggest hurdles? Like, for us, it's just the simple fact that we've done it this way. We're not ready to do it kind of online. But where is it on the fulfillment side? Where's kind of the, the hump where you say, if you can just get past this, you're going to see a substantial change? So I'd say if you can get past, great question, thank you. If you can get past the mindset that you have to do everything yourself, mm. I think that's probably the biggest one for me. A lot of shops get crippled with the amount of technology that they buy just because they can get approved and they have the space and the building and the wherewithal uh, to buy it. But really being successful across multiple forms of print mm -hmm. simultaneously is difficult. <laughs> a little bit more difficult to find skilled labor uh, right now as well. And so we're seeing a strong case for big businesses that are shifting a lot of their space and a lot of their capacity to heat transfer and printing as a technology and actually connecting transfers into their location to just press. Mm -hmm. And the advantages of that are, are, are many. One of, the, one of the reasons why is it's very easy to train on. It's very easy to stand up an operator. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to scale and measure your output. Uh, but also, it keeps you on the cutting edge of innovation. Because I can guarantee you this, if you buy a printer on this floor today, in three months, there is going to be a new, a better, and a faster printer. And in six months, there's probably gonna be another one after that. And so by tying into a partner like a Stalls mm -hmm. that can make the transfers for you, we invest the money, we do the innovation, and we try to deliver the product really quick. So all you have to do is worry about decorating it to the garment. It just simplifies the total equation. Mm -hmm. And I'll even take it one step further. We have some companies now that are finding a lot of value in finding a good contract printer mm -hmm. that has heat printing as an option. And so whether that's our Stalls Decorating Fulfillment Center or somebody that's part of the Sanmar PSST program, there's a lot of contract printers that are not just screen printing anymore and not right. just embroider anymore. They are adopting new technology for print on demand and they're able to help you to really uh, grow that business. So we can make those connections. That's interesting because I was thinking, you know, if you look at 2000 to like 2011, every company hired developers because the SaaS had never, the SaaS was not a thing at that time. And what you realized is you kind of can paint yourself into a corner really fast is when you do that and you invest whatever it is, a fortune to build it, you're not putting away extra money, everything. Well, in five more years, and when going to need developers to redo all of this again as technology changes. So that's why SaaS became so important to level it. And kind of as you're describing this, I'm kind of thinking it's the exact same thing where you realize, I just want to sell. I don't want to do any of this other 
other stuff. I just want to play to my strengths, sell. And most people, when they start out, that's why they got in. I can sell this. I have people that want to buy it. And then they're working the rest out. And that's what we're saying is, but we've already worked the rest out for you, <laughs> right? That's like kind of like a SaaS is you're filling in those gaps of where yeah. they do it the same as us in that, in that regard. Yeah, and you don't want to saddle yourself with overhead. I mean, you want to be lean. I think we all learned uh, diversification and agility in the last uh, being a nimble company and being able to evolve and adapt quickly in mm -hmm. the market. And so I would just say be very careful about what you're investing in, mm -hmm. making sure that uh, you're well calculated, not only that that's going to print for the clients of today, but the clients and the opportunities of tomorrow are changing pretty rapidly. I mean, we weren't even talking about name and image likeness two years ago, but now it's a major market opportunity for those serving sports. Yep. You know, 10 years ago, we really didn't have influencers at the rate we have them in affiliate marketing programs to drive business, right? There's just so much happening out there in digital transformation, which is a big blanket category yep. that's changing the way we should be thinking about the business. Yeah, I totally agree. I think, I think that most people want to. What we find is it's that moment where you're like, well, when I don't know what to do, you just do what you know. And so everybody's kind of waiting to look over and go, so what are they doing? That looks awesome. I'm waiting for it. Let me move over. And, and I'm, I, I can tell you for absolute certainty from our perspective, 100% of our clients that make that move, they, they're just shocked at like how much they like it. Like in their brain, we usually hear, I should have done this sooner. I, I would just, it, it, but that, that tripping up of not realizing, they look at it as a threat as opposed to an, an advantage. And the ones that we've that taken to it quickly, they have huge advantages. Like they accelerate really quickly because just like anything else in a job, you get into a system. And if your system is selling, you can sell more, right? If you're not doing all the other stuff that keeps you from selling. So we like those bump ups and we have a lot of use cases of high, high we've had clients that double, tripled their business in 60 days by being able to close a big deal that somebody else. So like in Australia, we're global. We had a client that signed in 48 days of going live, they closed the Australian Football League. That's 720 team stores. And the reason is with our technology, they could set it up in three weeks. And that there was just all co-branded on their site without a problem. It's just nobody could do it. And again, they went at the highest price. That's the whole point is you should be, it, you don't need to be off the charts, but you should be a premium. You're, you're, you're taking better care of your clients. They'll pay for that. They should. We would, right? Everybody's wearing something that they like because, and they'll pay the premium for it. This industry is no different. Excellent. So hopefully you've gathered a lot uh, from this presentation. Um, we'll stick around for questions. For people that want to get in contact with you uh, afterwards, Jason, what's the best way for them to do that? The easiest way is just go to Brickle, B-R-I-K-L dot com. And you can take a look through there, book a meeting uh, and reach out to us. And we'll be happy to show a demo uh, and answer any questions or as much as we, we can for everybody. Excellent. And on our uh, Stalls TV YouTube channel in our Heat Press for Profit Facebook group, I'd encourage you to subscribe or join both of those. We'll be bringing content to you from leading providers like Brickle and teaching you how you can utilize that to grow your Heat Press uh, business. Uh, this will conclude this presentation. Our next presentation you're going to want to be here for. It's at 2 o'clock and it's with Jenna as well as Melissa Clark from Lane 7. They're talking about apparel and print trends uh, for next year. And so that's a really exciting one. We encourage you to join us back. Thanks so much. Thanks.